What's up guys? I'm just chilling here at this really high angle of attack. It's crazy how much lift these wings produce when we're up like this. Oh, this is nuts, man. Oh, Betsy, what's happening? It's almost like we lost a whole bunch of lift all at once there. Welcome to Free Pilot Training. I'm Josh and this is Mike. And this is Private Pilot Ground Lesson 3 where I'm going to explain stalls in detail. As you may remember from the last lesson, lift is good, but sometimes we intentionally want to reduce the amount of lift that our airplane is producing. One of those times is when we're trying to descend for a landing, but something that's not good is losing a bunch of lift all at once. When our airplane has a rapid loss of lift, this is what we call a stall. To completely understand stalls and why they cause a rapid loss of lift, we need to take a closer look at the cross section of a wing. This is what we call an airfoil. Up here at the front of the airfoil, we call this the leading edge. Then at the very back, we call that the trailing edge. In order to understand this next part, let's draw an imaginary line from the leading edge of our wing down through the trailing edge. And we actually have a name for this imaginary line. It's called the cord line. Now, as the wing of our aircraft moves forward through the air, that creates airflow over the wing in the opposite direction. As you may remember, this wind is partially caused by the aircraft's forward movement. It's also caused by wind from the propeller, which we call prop wash, and the actual wind can add or take away from this total wind that goes over our wings. This total wind is what we like to call relative wind, and that's what causes our wing to create lift. Now, when your airplane changes its direction of travel, like when it pitches up or pitches down, the relative wind changes as well because relative wind directly opposes the direction that your airplane is traveling. So you could say that the relative wind acts on the airfoil at different angles, and we call that angle the angle of attack. More specifically, the angle of attack is the angle between the relative wind and the wing's cord line. And this is super important for you to understand. Now, as we just mentioned in the last video, when we increase the relative wind or when we increase the angle of attack on our wing, we also increase the lift that a wing produces. As long as there's smooth air flowing around the upper and lower surfaces of the wing. You may not know this, but as air flows above and below the wings, it actually does so in very thin layers. Because of that, we call this laminar airflow. Because I guess the definition of the word laminar is thin horizontal layers. Yep, I guess that name makes sense then. But anyway, at low angles of attack, the wind moving around the wing flows smoothly. And that allows those little layers to stay separated and flow around the wing in a nice orderly fashion. But as we increase the angle of attack on our wing, once again, this increases our lift because that air on top of the wing has a further distance to travel. And that creates less air pressure up there. But if we start increasing our angle of attack too much, that air doesn't want to flow around the upper surface of the wing anymore. It wants to flow straight back, and because of that, this air becomes separated from the upper surface of the wing. This is what we call boundary layer separation. And as you can see from my pitiful little drawing here, the air on the back side of this wing is no longer flowing in a nice orderly fashion. It's kind of just doing its own little thing back there, and it's just making a huge mess. So these nice neat little layers are not nice and neat anymore. And that means we no longer have good laminar flow. And that's not neat at all. <laughs> How neat is that? Now, even at these high angles of attack where we've got all this turbulence back here, our wings can still produce some lift, even though we don't have good laminar flow. And as long as the lift that our wing is producing is greater than or equal to the weight of our aircraft, we can just sit here and chill at these high angles of attack. With that in mind, if we continue to increase the angle of attack on our wing, at some point the wing will no longer be able to support the weight of the aircraft. And when that happens, we'll get a rapid loss of lift. This rapid loss of lift is what we're calling a stall. Now, something super important for you to keep in mind is that every airplane has a specific angle of attack that it stalls at. With that in mind, altitude and the gross weight of your aircraft can have an effect on the airspeed that your airplane stalls at, but the angle of attack is always the same. Now, right before the airplane stalls, it reaches the point where the cord line on the airfoil is at the greatest angle with the relative wind. If this angle increases at all beyond this point, the aircraft will stall. This maximum angle is what we call the critical angle of attack. And when you exceed the critical angle of attack on your airplane is when the airplane will stall every single time. If you don't remember anything else from today's lesson, this is the one thing you should remember. When you exceed your wing's critical angle of attack, the airplane will stall. 
airspeed does not matter. Now, here's something else you should know. When you exceed the airplane's critical angle of attack and it stalls, the wings are still producing some lift. If they weren't, you would literally fall to your death if you stalled the aircraft. So, our wings are still producing some lift. If that's true, how do you think we can fix a stall when we exceed the critical angle of attack? Yeah, all we have to do is reduce the angle of attack. So to break the stall, the most important thing we can do is reduce our angle of attack by pitching down or releasing some of that backstick pressure on the yoke. This will get us below our critical angle of attack so the wings can start producing lift again. In just a minute, we'll continue with your training. But would you allow me to show you something that's specifically made for pilots that I think you're going to like? I've been flying a few different types of airplanes now for about 10 years. And one of the things I've noticed is that we pilots tend to accumulate a lot of equipment. So I've been looking for a product that I can use to protect my gear and kind of protect my investment. So when Sterling Pacific reached out to me and asked me to check out one of their pieces of luggage, I was a little bit skeptical, but this luggage is specifically made for pilots, so I really wanted to check it out. And I have to say, this is exactly what I was looking for. I can throw all my clothes and my gear in one bag, and I don't have to worry about it getting damaged or someone breaking into it. If you do any traveling at all, you probably already know what I'm talking about. I don't know how many cheap luggage sets I've bought, but I do know that I've spent enough money replacing equipment and the old luggage that I could have just bought something nice that was gonna last. And the tough part is knowing what to buy because there's a bunch of stuff out there. So if you're looking for something with superior craftsmanship, you're going to love this product. And if that interests you at all, you can get $300 off by coupon code free pilot training. Thank you so much for taking a look at this and let's continue with the training. Accidental stalls are some of the scary situations you can get yourself into. Because of that, you're going to be practicing some of the different stall recoveries when you start your flight training. You want to see one? Check this out. Let's simulate that we're coming in for a landing and we get too slow and exceed our critical angle of attack. All right, so I'm gonna get set up for a little power off stall. I'll uh, show you guys how I, how I like to do this. All right, we wanna end this maneuver no lower than 1500 feet AGL. 2800 is a good altitude to start out. We're only gonna lose maybe a max of 500 feet here. All right, so I'll pick a heading. Southbound heading looks good. We're in the white arc. Lower all the flaps. We'll keep this southbound heading here. All the flaps are in, seat belts on, fuel selector valve on both, makes your best power, throttle set. We'll get the rest here in just a second. All right, we'll go ahead and turn the carb heat on. Idle power, pitch for 60 knots. Pitch it for 60 to simulate that we're landing. Once we hit our landing speed, then we'll raise that nose up on the, on the horizon and we'll just wait for the stall. We wanna maintain our heading with ailerons. There's the first indication. Got wing buffeting now. Now we're waiting for the drop. There it is. Max, relax, carb heat off. First notch of flaps. And then I'm gently bringing that nose up to the horizon. Broke the stall by relaxing that backstick pressure. That's the most important part. I've got the nose on the horizon. I've got to climb, so I'm going to raise that second notch. It's going to get rid of some of the drag. I'm waiting for 70 knots and a positive rate of climb. Could probably pitch down just a little bit. Uh, this part isn't really required, but this is the my procedure because this is a really systematic way of raising the flaps slowly. There it is, 70 knots, positive rate, flaps up, after takeoff checklist. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something from today's video. In the next one, we're going to talk about how you could potentially get yourself into a spin, and you thought stalls were scary. I'll put that video right here, but if you want to take a break from studying for a little bit and you just want to enjoy some fun flying, Give this video right here a try. I think you'll enjoy it. Sip.